This is a really straightforward method to verify Newton's second law. It uses data logging equipment, which I'm sure you'll have available at your school. It might just need digging out and dusting off. For example, these light gates were sitting in a cupboard and hardly ever used, but many thanks to Data Harvest for loaning me this new V-Log data logger. That's right, it will still work with this old stuff. Uh, this new stuff is even easier to use, but really all you need is a laptop with the software and this old gear. So a light gate works by just measuring the time of which the beam is broken. The Newton's second law is that the resultant force is proportional to the mass times acceleration. So we need to measure acceleration and we need to measure a resultant force. We'll process that data, plot a graph, and we'll get a gradient equal to the total mass of the whole system. That's the trolley, the string, and the accelerating masses. We're using an air track, but you could just easily use a ramp, which is sloped to compensate for friction. So we need two light gates, a pair of light gates to measure a speed, an initial speed, and a final speed. And you can see the accelerating mass is this uh, mass hanger on the end of the pulley there. That accelerating force F is equal to mg, and we're doing it for a range of 10 grams to 100 grams. U is the initial velocity measured at the first light gate, V is the final velocity, and the logger also returns the time in between the two. So here is the readout. U is the initial speed, V is the final speed, and T is the time between them. Use the acceleration equation. Acceleration is change in speed over time. Numbers in. To three significant figures, 0 0.145 meters per second squared. So calculate acceleration for each different accelerating mass, and then you've got a range of accelerations for each resultant force, if you like. Now that looks very similar to the equation for a straight line, y equals mx. So with your calculated accelerations, plot that against your calculated accelerating forces. That's the little masses, the 10 grams to 100 grams on the pulley. That's your y-axis, acceleration is your x-axis, and hopefully the mass of the whole system, the total mass, is the gradient. Now when we do this experiment, most of the time the mass given by the gradient comes out slightly higher than the mass if you weigh the whole thing um, on a balance, and that's because there is still some frictional forces, even though we've reduced them by using a air track. The experiment does, however, yield pretty precise results and you get a really nice straight line and you can therefore show that resultant force is indeed proportional to acceleration.